Hi. What's up, gamers? So technically, this is the first time I show my face on this channel. So it's kind of like a face reveal video. But if you follow me on Instagram, you'd know how I look already. But anyways, yeah. So this is my face. Hi. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I personally edit my portraits. And I'm going to be using Lightroom CC version, which is right here. So let me open it up. I feel like a lot of people use Lightroom Classic because every time I go on YouTube or on the internet and I look up like, oh, Lightroom editing tutorial or Lightroom tips and tricks, it seems like I'm the only person who uses Lightroom CC. Um, everyone always does Classic and and yeah, I don't know. So if you, if you use Lightroom CC like me, please let me know because I feel like I'm the only one who uses it, like I said. And I don't like that feeling of being alone. <laughs> All right, so this is the photo shoot I did for a client. Um, and if you're wondering why he he kind of looks like me, uh, maybe not in this picture, but let's see. I think there's one where he's wearing glasses. Um, wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, I don't know. I guess like here if you're wondering why he kind of looks like me that's yeah, because he's my brother so uh hey bro if you're watching this right now congrats on graduating and thanks for being awesome i guess i don't know but <laughs> anyways so let's take a look at this picture here so and this isn't going to be like a play-by-play -play or like a very in-depth lightroom tutorial but i will be showing you certain things that I do that that's helped me a lot when editing and I feel like they're really easy and anyone can kind of pick it up pretty easily so this is the photo there's no edits on here I reset the the edits I had so the first the very first thing I do when I'm editing a photo is I look at the lighting and an easy way to sort of fix the lighting is just by clicking auto right here so you click that and it automatically corrects the lighting. It corrects the highlights, the shadows, the exposure. It, it does pretty much everything for you. Um, now, typically I will sort of mess with it even after it automatically changed the lighting, but not too much. Maybe in this case, I'll decrease the highlights just a bit to get some, some more details here. Um, as you can see, it kind of like it was kind of sunny out and I don't remember what time we took this, but uh, so that's why I'm kind of decreasing the highlights a little bit more than the auto. And I also want to increase the shadows a bit just to get some of the details around here and even like in the background or this side of my subject's face or my brother's face. I don't, I don't know. Um, so anyways, so I think that looks pretty good. Now, this right here is the color mixer. And it's a super powerful tool. Um, I don't use it that often, but when I do, I'll use or I'll edit the greens. So for some reason, I don't know why, but I like the greens when they are a little on the lighter side or the warmer side. Uh, I just think it looks better. Maybe I'm crazy, but I do something like this when I'm editing. So something like that, I think it looks pretty good. Now, the main thing or the main edits that I think are gonna help your photos improve or stand out are, is right here, the effects bar or the effects tools. So we have texture clarity and dehaze and vignette. Now for portraits, I like to use, or I like to decrease the clarity a bit. I think that gives the image a better sort of, sort of smoother look to them and just make sure you don't go all the way because if you do, your photos end up looking like cartoonish like this, but maybe 20, 25, 27, just around there. I'd say don't go past like 50 and you should be chilling. Uh, you should have a smoother looking image, especially on the skin uh, of your subject. So that's why I decreased the clarity. As far as vignetting, dehazing and texture, I don't use it too much, especially if the lighting is already pretty good. Sometimes I'll increase the texture just a little bit to bring out some of the details. 
but really clarity is the biggest thing that I focus on when I am editing portraits. Uh, oh, actually here on detail, if you increase the noise reduction just a bit, it also helps with that sort of smooth like feel to your photos that I was talking about. So I, but again, don't go over, overboard, overboard or your picture looks sort of oily and like cartoonish and I mean, unless you're going for that, you can do that, but I personally don't like that. So maybe like 15, 20 max, I think is a good spot. Let's do 16, sweet 16. Uh, in optics, so here in the enable lens correction, it should automatically be uh, checked off. If it's not, just check it. And that's just gonna, what that's gonna do is just fix your, your lens distortion. Uh, Lightroom automatically detects what lens you use. Here's the lens I use, the Sony uh, 18 to 135. It's a kit lens. It's not too crazy. It's all right. I need a new one for sure. But for now, that's what I have. So, so yeah. And then you can remove the chromatic aberration. Um, that's just like sometimes you'll have color around the edges of certain things like for example here in this area but it doesn't look too bad here but i mean i'm still gonna check it i these two things i automatically check every single time every single photo and geometry same thing i always try to have either level or, or auto what that's gonna do is just level out your photo no one likes a crooked photo so that's a really easy fix here in geometry so this is what we have right now i think it's pretty good if we look at the before and then the after um, I think it's already pretty good, but we can improve on it just a little bit. So we're going to go to the brush, the healing brush tool. And if you hit space bar, you can zoom in. And what I use the healing brush tool for is basically to just get rid of certain, um, things in the picture. Like for example, here, I'm getting rid of some of these marks on, uh, his face. Uh, this works very well for pimples or not just like facial um, aspects of the photo, but let's say for example, he had a stain on his white shirt or a stain on his pants here. You could use this healing brush to take it off pretty easily. And actually see there was a mark there on his hand. I don't know what that is. So I can just get rid of it like that. And I mean, you don't want to go too crazy with it, but for these small little edits, I think it's a really good tool and yeah let's see i think that looks wait wait a minute wait a minute maybe like this okay yeah so that looks a lot better already and again you don't want to go too crazy like for example you don't want to use this to to get rid of this building here um but if there were some birds in the background or like a certain cloud in, in the background that you want to get rid of you can definitely use the healing tool um, either the clone or the heal mode, it really doesn't matter. They both do the same thing pretty much. Uh, if, for example, if you did want to get rid of this building though, that's something that's somewhere or that's something, uh, I can't even talk right now. That's when you'd want to use like Photoshop. I think, um, Photoshop is a way better tool to use when you're trying to do those intense edits. So if you want a video about Photoshop, let me know. But as you can see, we cleared up my subject's face pretty nicely. And so this looks good. I think this is very almost finished. Uh, another thing I do is I will go to the masking and I will select the brush tool or you can just click B, but I wanted to show you where it's at. So I want to enhance the eyes. So there's many ways to do that, but I use the brush tool and basically I just kind of like draw over the eyes a bit like that. And if you turn, if you toggle this right here, it'll, um, it'll lighten up in red. So you know where you're drawing or where you're brushing. And then after that, I just use the preset. It literally says enhance eyes, click on that and you're good to go. I think all it does is, uh, raise the, raises the exposure and the saturation and the clarity a bit. But if you want to do that manually, you can, but when you're editing like over 200 pictures at once, 
you you want to use the presets trust me so I this looks like a finished photo for me I think it's pretty good um, if I wanted to crop it I can show you how I'd crop it so click here on the crop and then I use I use this rotate aspect ratio for Instagram because we know on Instagram the 16 by 9 ratio um, I think those type of photos are a lot better for Instagram especially if you're trying to maximize your screen real estate if you want me to make a video on Instagram photography and how to like post your pictures or how I post my photos let me know but basically you want your photo to take up the majority of the screen so something like this is a good crop and if you go here on the crop overlay you can see different sort of uh, compositional tools the golden ratio is actually sorry the golden spiral is something that i've been trying to get into and learn and i think it fits well here as you can see this line it kind of goes with like the line of the trees and then um kind of wraps around uh, his foot here it goes up around and then sort of loops where the building is uh i think that's royce hall if you're familiar with ucla that's a pretty famous um i think it's a lecture room or something like that uh, i don't know but i should know i'm sorry but anyways yeah i think this is a really good crop here so this is something that i'd probably send to a client or in this case my brother and they could just take this and post it and it's it's fine it's, if you want to see the before here's the before here's the after so it looks pretty good all right now let's look at a different picture um because i want to give you a few examples so let's go down to uh, this photo here. So I showed you what I did or what I do when I kind of start and edit from scratch. But now I'm going to show you how I edit a photo by using a preset. So I use presets sometimes. Well, like half the time. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, but I do. Uh, actually, I don't know why I'm apologizing. I feel like everyone uses presets, but you go on here here on Lightroom, click on this, it says presets. So you click on it, sometimes it lags. Uh, well, I feel like it always lags on me, but you're gonna wanna go to, so here are like your presets, I guess. I mean, I've had these forever, but if you go on premium here, this is kind of like a new feature. Um, I think it popped up in like one of the latest updates, uh, if I'm not mistaken, like within the last year. Cause I don't remember seeing this like when I first started using Lightroom, but well, anyways, so you have a bunch of presets here. Now, if you look at the portraits uh, presets, I know it'll say like deep skin, medium skin, light skin, whatever. I don't really look at the like the skin, like, you know, deep, medium, light, whatever. I kind of just look at the edit and then see what I like about it. So uh, you can kind of just scroll over and it'll like apply the presets to you, for you. Um, so yeah, let's just kind of go through and see which one we like. Uh, okay, I think I'm liking this one right here. This one's kind of cool. Actually, wait, wait, let me check. Mm, yeah, see, these are kind of nice too. So maybe, I don't know, maybe, wait, wait. Okay, that one's good. So all I did, I just clicked on this preset right here. It automatically did all the edits for me. Uh, so if I wanted to, I guess I could just like leave it at is, as is with the preset. But um, well, even if I use the preset, I still do some edits to it. So I'll still click auto and I'll still kind of adjust accordingly. So maybe like the blacks, the shadows a little bit higher, um, the highlights a little farther down. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. As you can see, the preset kind of mix messed with these colors here, which is fine. I think it looks good. Um, I'm not really sure what I would change here. So maybe, I don't know, decreases the blue a little bit. But anyways, color grading, I don't really touch on at all. Um, and like I said, these should automatically every single time pick these. Trust me, you're going to want to click on those. Geometry, again, like I said, auto or level. Uh, they pretty much always do a great job of leveling your photo. So, 
Um, we're gonna reduce the clarity a bit, like I said earlier, to get that smooth skin feel and bring up the noise reduction again for that smooth skin feel or look. So that's pretty good. And then, like I said earlier, I like to enhance the eyes. So I'll be using the Create New Mask tool. You go to Brush, you zoom in, you draw in the eyes like this. Just draw, just draw in. It's really easy. Preset, Enhance Eyes, boom, you're done. Um, and then finally the brush, the Healing Brush tool to get rid of some unwanted marks either on your uh, subject or in the background. Uh, sometimes it usually does a good job, but sometimes as you can see here, it like, I don't know why it goes down here, but you can easily change it, like bring it back up. Or if you delete it with the delete key on your keyboard and then just do it again, it'll kind of fix itself. Um, so yeah, that looks a lot better. And I think, uh, I don't think there's anywhere else where I could use that. So, oh, one last thing. So there's people, if you notice, there's people here in the background. Now, normally it's fine here. It's not that big a deal. If they were like, if I was doing a landscape photo and I saw people there, I can use, I can take them out using Photoshop. But in this situation, um, they, if you can, I don't know if you can, I don't know if this is a big deal for you, but when I'm editing, it is a big deal for me, or it's like, eh, it's like this much of a deal for me. But basically, if you can see here, I think that's a girl. She's wearing like this pink, pink hoodie. And as you can see here, this guy's wearing like a green shirt. So when we zoom out, you can kind of see them. So a way I um, can help minimize that is by using the brush tool and then you just paint over them like this paint over them paint over um as you can see if i zoom in yeah i'm just all i'm doing is i'm painting over them and then i just bring down the saturation not all the way because it looks because then it'll look like you know whoa you know i don't know about that but paint over them maybe like bring it down like 50 percent 35 percent and then here i'm at 40 and if you zoom out, it looks less, it's just less distracting. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of extra, but sometimes you gotta be extra. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think that's pretty good there. And again, like I'll, I'll use it again on here, watch. So just paint over it like this and then just bring down the saturation. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that is actually kind of extra. Yeah, look here. I don't know what I'm thinking. That was. I think that's actually a little extra. Let me erase that. A freaking fire hydrants. Are you serious? But yeah, before the after, before after, I think pretty good. So, anyways, I think I'm gonna wrap that this video up. Uh, it was my first time making a video on camera, so I mean, I was kind of nervous. I'm, I'm still kind of nervous, as you can probably tell. But if you enjoyed the video, let me know. And I don't know. Have a great day, I guess. See you later.